Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So God's making it all new. Why save Mother Earth when God's going to destroy it and say, I'm going to just make it. The earth has been cursed. Genesis 3, thanks to Adam. The gap between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2 with Satan and all his beings. So God is going to melt it with a fervor of heat. He's going to roll it up like a scroll. He's going to toss it out. And I saw a new heaven. There's no space junk. There's no Hubble. There's no rovers on Mars. And a new earth. No curse. Now this is a brand new earth. Genesis 1-2. That's not a brand new earth. Genesis 1 1 is a new earth. But we don't know the difference between 1 1 and 1 2 in Genesis. They say the, the earth is a billion, million, something years old. That's perfectly correct. We don't know. Man has been 6,000 years. But here's a brand new, sparkling new earth. And a new heaven to go with it. No Satan, no sin, no iniquity. For the first heaven and the first earth that they call Mother Earth were passed away. Bye bye. Gone. And there was no more sea. Now look at 20 verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. This is not the kind of sea that it's on the planet Earth. So when you see the old world maps with the dragon swimming in the ocean, it's not the ocean they're talking about. It's the sea that's above your head, where you have astronauts in oxygen suits. They drive around in spaceships. And I, John, is the testimony, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. So there's a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. New heaven, that's the, that's the nation, the Gentile. The new earth, that goes to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. New Jerusalem, that's the church age Christians. So there's a planet earth, and then there's a city. I don't know what's in the new heavens. I don't know if there's going to be stars and moons and planets. I don't know. We're not, not told. And I heard a great voice out of heaven. Say, Here's that great voice again. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. That's God's abode. That's not the tabernacle of Moses because God was there and God left. And he will dwell with them. New Jerusalem, new earth, new heavens. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. So we have a new people. We don't have the race of Adam anymore. We have the race of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 
we have the, the, the bride of Jesus Christ. And then we have nations that have done what God has told them to do. Now, after Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, we're in 21.4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. After the great white throne judgment. There shall be no more death. Death, you won't even know what it is anymore. You will live eternally. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will live for eternity. The nations out in the universe will live for eternity. They will be what Adam and Eve were supposed to be before the fall. Neither sorrow, no more anxiety, no more tissues, no more tears, no more crying, nor crying. So there's a difference between sorrow and and crying in the Bible. Sorrow is really, you're really in deep pain, you're really deep suffering, and crying is, you know, tears. There is a difference. Neither shall there be any more uh, pain. There will be no suffering and pain. In glory for the former things are passed away sorrow tears crying and pain they're gone but it it does not say we will not remember and for myself my side note are we going to remember what pain is so we can completely glorify God now here we are in these bodies we're no more going to die. We're no more going to have tears. And we're no more going to have that pain that we had on this planet Earth. Are we going to remember that to give God more glory and honor? Just, is it not only passed away, but is it just totally all gone? Huh? Forgotten. Forgotten. But see, I don't understand what the heaven is. We're going to glorify Jesus Christ for all the things that he's done. And what memories are we going to have? Now, you, you go on the other side of the spectrum. And you go to Luke 16, you see a man that is in hell. Well, he remembered Lazarus' name. He remembers he has five brethren. He remembers that, you know, they're going to come to that place. I don't know. And he that sat upon the throne said, God be God. Behold, I make all things new. So in a way, maybe our memory is completely gone because all this is going to be gone. And it will be all gone. And it will be totally newish to us, if I can say that. Huh? And he said unto me, Write, for these words are faithful and tr are true and faithful. And we saw that in twenty two. We'll see that in twenty two six. I think that if you remember some things, it's still desirable. Yeah, I just, that much is not told unto us about heaven. Even Paul said, you know, we've grown and we just don't know what things are coming. And we've seen what we are already studying the entire book of the Bible. Even with the wickedness of pain and sorrow and, and the chastisements of God, people still don't get right. So if we could tell men what heaven's completely alike, it's not going to change their... And he said unto me, it is done. The old is gone. The new is here. 
I am Alpha, the beginning, and Omega, the ending, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely, John chapter 4. There will be no water bills in heaven. In the area of Israel, they would build a, a community well, and I was don't think they. Would, I don't ever see where they brought money to pay for that water. Owing the succession of the European Japheth and his mad main for capitalistic advantage over the little people, would they make a system for you to drink water? Now I grew up in an area where I came from, my home state. My grandparents had a well, and it was good. I mean, during drought, summertime, we had to watch the water. But then the city came in and made us have to do it, and then made my grandparents have to pay for the piping to his house, and had to give them a water bill every month, because we can't let you drink water for free. We can't tax you on that. And God says, I'll give you water, and I'll give you free. I don't know if the Christian is going to need this water. We've been already satisfied by Jesus Christ. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I'm not an overcomer, according to Matthew. He that endures to the end. We see in the Revelation, he that overcometh the mark of the beast, the, the, the name of the beast, and the number of the beast. I didn't overcome. I only way I overcame is by the righteousness and the merit of the finished work of Jesus Christ. I don't think this is talking to the Christian right now. I we will talk about the Christian. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Well, I am already his son. That state for the Christian right now is reading this Bible. It's not, I shall be his son. I am his son by the Holy Spirit and by the finished work of Jesus Christ. So that's not the Christian. There are people yet to be the children of God. And the illustration that he told Solomon that, and Solomon is a Jew. But the fearful say goodbye to fears. Bye-bye. The unbelieving. There will be no unbelievers where we're going. There will be no atheists, agnostics, or religions. Any abominable. No snowmen. That's somebody who is completely, completely is involved in sin and wickedness. That God doesn't want to have anything to do with it. You know one of the abominable things is right now? Sodomites. I can give you, if I had a list right now, chapter and verses with the Sodomites. Do you know what was an abominable to the Egyptians? Shepherds, sheep, and the children of God. And murderers. There'll be no killing in heaven. No televisions. And whoremongers. And sorcerers. Magic. Witches. Satan worship. Fortune telling. There will be no horoscopes. And idolaters. There'll be no statues. No aids to worship. And all liars. There will be no lies in heaven. Though they are found in churches today. He said, well, wait a minute. I was involved in sorcery. I was, a, I was an idolater once. I've told lies. I've been about, I've been murdered. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, Romans 1, 21, and John 8, 24. 
We were of those, but we are washed under the blood of Jesus Christ. We are cleansed. It's not us that sinned. It was the flesh that sinned. And for the Christian, that body has been brought up, has been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We have been given a new body. We have the new nature. We are Christ. These are people who had never done anything with their sins prescribed by God. If you're a Christian and you lied, you're saved, you're always saved, you will be saved. If you never pled the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9, it will show up as wood, hay, or stubble and burn up and that's it. You'll lose. If you pled the blood of Jesus Christ, it won't show up at judgment. If an Old Testament saint brought what he was supposed to bring and then when Jesus Christ died, it paid for those sins. It won't be there. These are people that have never done what God told them to do. They're in hell. And they're burning in hell. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth for burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death. In chapter 20 we were warned about that second death. Born once, die twice, you're damned. You were born in Adam's image. You stayed in Adam's, Adam's image. Your works were, were judged according to the books. Your works did not meet to God's expectation. And you burn in hell. Have their part in the lake of fire with burnings with fire. Now the captain will say, well see that's purgatory you can get out. No. Do you see how well when you think what you can do can top Jesus Christ? He'll have their part. A man will go into the lake of fire will burn for eternity. That is your part for paying for your own sins. There is no payment for you to pay for your own sins. Absolutely none. So what you thought you were doing, okay, I'll, I'll let you have your part in hell. And when you're done paying for it, you can come out, but you're not ever done paying with, for it. So with this expression here, it's kind of like, you think you can do it your way? Okay. I'll send you off the lake of fire and just have a little comfort that you, you thought what you did was comforting, but it's not. This is religion. All religions. Man goes to man, he says, say these prayers. Do these magazines. Blow this bomb cross-leg and mm yourself in another world don't eat me don't god says you'll end up in the lake of fire say lord jesus you died for me you suffered and bled for me the only way i am told that my sins can be cleansed is by your sacrifice i'm no more of these i am a child of god by jesus christ i'm no more a sinner even though this flesh is no sin And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plague. We read about those. And talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Go back to verse 2. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God. Out of heaven prepared as a bride adored for her husband. That city is totally given to the bride of Jesus Christ. Alright. You stand before the, the preacher or whoever you got married for. You say, I do, I do. I pronounce you husband and wife. And don't you have some kind of, usually some kind of ceremony. And then doesn't he take you off on a honeymoon? Well, what's the next thing he does after he takes you off on the honeymoon? He brings you home, and here's your home. People don't realize how many marriages are going on. And I know, <coughs> I know, marriages and funerals are going away from God and church. But let's look at what we know already. How many people have followed the exact order of marriage, and they don't even realize it's coming out coming out of the Bible? Have you ever heard anybody say, "Well, we're going to get married"? 
Let's go on our honeymoon first and come back if you ever hear that. No. He said, well, okay. Let's say we, we live together and then we get married. Well, you're not doing it the, the Bible way. That's fornication. That's a sin. So what we're reading here, God has set the rule for marriage. And he carried me away in the spirit. Now, now isn't that funny? Carry across the threshold. To a great and high mountain. You know you're going to be a mountain climber? You know you're going to be riding horses? I couldn't climb a mountain today if you put rockets on my back. I am going to get such a new body. I'm going to ride on a horse and my keister is not going to hurt. They're going to pierce me with a sword and it's not going to hurt. It's not going to do me no damage. I'm going to keep rank with the fellow soldiers that are with me when I come back with Jesus Christ. And now it says I'm going to be able to climb a mountain. Yeah, but that city is on a mountain. Here the angel carried, if that city's on a mountain, how are we going to go up and down? There are gates. There are cities on this earth. We're going to be visiting the Jews. We're going to be visiting the outer outer space of the Gentiles. We're going to be going all around. And we've already seen with the angels, they fly around without wings. We're going to have that capability. You know how quick we can do? How quick did Jesus go from the, from the, from the garden where Mary was? Go up to God the Father and come back and meet the men on the road of Emmaus and then show up in the upper room. That's how quick we're going to be. That's a hike. I couldn't do that right now. I'd die with no oxygen if I tried to climb to heaven. He carried me away in spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem. So when you say, oh, I'm going to go to the holy city, no, it's full of sin, it's full of wickedness, it's full of Catholics, it's full of Islam, it's full of Arabians, it's full of Americans, it's full of tourism, it's a kind of filthy place, it don't really look that good. And then they'll lead you around to all the lies where Jesus wasn't and did not do because that's the Catholic tradition. Here's the holy city. And when I visit the holy city, it will be the holy city. Brand new. Descending out of heaven from God. So it's still coming down. And John enters into it. Having the glory of God. In the present tense, John writes this. It hasn't happened yet. And yet John writes like, here we are right now. Everyone come join me, you Christians, and read as we are in part of this city. So it almost looks like John becomes a type of Christian, type of bride, that we will step into that city as it's coming down. Wouldn't that be feeling great? His light, or excuse me, her light was like unto a stone most precious. Uh, I would think with colorful spectrum, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now you can look up these colors online or a gem book, but we're forgetting something. What are these stones going to look like in its pure, uncursed state? Now, crystal, it says, all right, so crystal has to be like the crystal today. But can you picture a clear crystal without no infirmities at all? Wait. And wait till we find out what the gold looks like. And these are made by the creator. They're not dug out of the ground, too. I would assume God said, let there be this crystal, or he said something, let there be this city, something like Genesis 1, and boom. And had a wall great and high. That made Trump happy. 
There's a wall about this city. America is realizing she's heading into the, ba to the Bible Old Testament with cities with walls and she doesn't even know what she's doing. Now, I'm not going to go far to say, because I don't think America's in the Bible. But if we do build those walls, that may fulfill prophecy. But notice how we are heading back into the Bible, the Bible way, walls. And you would think, okay, here we are, we are in an uncursed world uncurse anything made read made by God why would we need a wall and I can't answer that it's not for protection it's not to feel strong because there are no more enemies a wall great and high and had 12 gates and notice how 12 and 3 keep showing up the Trinity and the children of Israel and the gates, 12 angels. So every gate has an angel. Angels are representation. We had an angel of the wind. We had an angel of the churches. Angels of the Euphrates River. Here are angels that stand at the gates of this city. You will be guaranteed to see an angel all the time. And names written thereon which are the name of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel upon those gates. Above the gate will be a tribe of Israel. And I can only assume that the tribe of Israel that's from the earth will come to that gate that's theirs. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So, you ever see a building that's got a date code on it? Well, the, there'll be a, here's a gate, and then there's a wall, a foundation to the next gate. Peter. The next gate to the next gate would be the foundation. James. From the gate to the next gate, the foundation. Will it be Paul? Which 12 apostles? We know it's not Judas. We know Mahathas, even though he's never mentioned anywhere later, we know that he was taking it the place of Judas by law. Be interested to find out who that 12 apostle is so you will think on that the wall of the city had 12 foundations in them the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb capital L so no question about it and he talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof in a cubic you would find in 1 Kings 6, 19 to 20, and they give a reference here to read uh, 10 feet. That's another place, another interesting measurement here. But then again, we don't know is this measurement man's measurement? Is it angel's measurement? Or is it new measurements? Okay. And the city lieth four square, rectangular. And the length is as large as the breadth, uh, square. Let's say rectangular, square. It's square, four square, square. The length, it's the same as the breadth. It's a square. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlong, furlongs. And the length and breadth and the height of it are equal. It's a cube. You know the size of your city.
And then when men want to gamble or take shots at life, they will use the same kind of cue to throw the dice. You will call something a ice cube and it's not square. It's rectangular. Some people think that heaven's going to be like a frozen state. I don't know. Get rid of global warming. That's the case. They say frozen, zero. There's no momentum. There's no movement. I don't know. That's what, they, that's what I've read. And he measured the wall there of uh, 140 and 4 cubits. 144? Where have we seen that number before? According to the measure of a man. Earthly man now? Now watch this. That is of the angel. So, looks like angels and men use the same measurement. Okay, now let's look at measurements right now. Is it Jewish measurement? Is it metric measurements? Or is it standard measurements? And the Bible says in Proverbs, a man that has uh, diverse kinds of, of instruments of measurement, it is an abomination, as we already read. You're supposed to go by the Bible means of measurement, not man's. And the Bible has given us a totally way of measuring things. So, And the building of the wall of it, the city, was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Gold... <clears throat> in its pure state is clear when it's got yellow or brown in it it's got impurities it's not clean it's not 100% and the foundations of this wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stone now garnish is an interesting word you go to a a good restaurant three four star restaurant and you say I want steak and baked potato with green beans all right they'll put the steak on there they'll let it just right they'll just right put the green beans there in the, in the baked potato they'll have it just right with butter and on the side uh, sour cream and then they'll put this little green or orange some kind of flowery grassy kind of thing that you don't eat but it's supposed to make your plate look wonderful you don't eat it it goes in the garbage unless you take it home you got animals that eat it but other than that it has no purpose it's called a garnish to make things look good I guess I didn't have and God says, with that definition right there, I am now going to mention 12 stones. That God says, I'm going to add it to my city foundation just to make it look prettier. And most of these stones, if not all of these stones, I have never ever seen or put my fingers on. And if I could see one, it would be a glass case. Preventing me. And yet, the garnish that God will do, that I will be able to walk up and touch one of these. Now, another thing, when you look at these, I get, get a stone book. I got one. Look at the, the, the colors of these stones as they will be read in a stone book. And think about the spectrum of God's holy pure light shining through this. Do you realize how colorful heaven is going to be? How sparkling New Jerusalem is going to be? And don't forget that green rainbow and the lightnings that's around God's throne. 
don't think about as you're approaching this city, you're going to see it far, far away. You're going to be able to see the splendor of this city and the colors of the spectrum and the rainbow of colors that would not represent sodomy and sin. That would represent that God said, I will no longer drown the whole world out by a flood. I'm going to put these colors here for everyone that is saved. I'm talking about the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the nation. For all those that I have brought to my home, because you have done what I told you to do, I have given you this glory and splendor. And God says, oh, I just garnished it. If this is a garnish of God, what is our body going to look like? What are our lives going to look like? And God will take what man has valued and say, that's just the foundation. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you can look these up in a, in a book. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Precious stones. The first foundation was of jasper, the second sapphire, and the third chalcedonites, the fourth emerald. Well, that's that phony city that, you know, that girl from Kansas is supposed to look for. It's a stone of the foundation of heaven. It's the color of the rainbow around God's home. The fifth sardix. The sixth, Sardus. The seventh, Chrysolite. The eighth, Beryl. The ninth, Topaz. Some of these you will find in birthstones. The tenth, I'm losing my place here, Chrysocorus. The eleventh, Jacrith. The twelfth, Amos. Amos. And the twelve gates, now get this one, that's not good enough. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Pearls are a living organism. Now, these this walls are great and high. I would assume that these gates are bigger than your average doorway. And I don't think that a clam coughed these pearls up. I think God said, let there be pearls, and there were the pearls. Awfully large pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Now, are they still round, or are they cut into rectangles? I don't know. And the street of the city was pure gold, so it's glass, crystal, we already read. Because as it were, transparent glass. When we walk on the streets of New Jerusalem, we're going to look down and see outer space. Now, me afraid of heights, that would get me oozy. But since I have no more fear, I'll be able to walk with that. Now, may I read something to you that people lie about? 21, verse 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. And when you open up a hymn book and you sing streets, you're wrong. You're not Bible at all. The Bible says that there is a or the street. There are no other streets. Because it said there's gates. So God knows the form of a plural. And he knows the form of the singular. There are not streets. There is a street. The hymn is wrong. Sorry. 
you are singing something that has changed the Bible. What would you think about a Bible that changes the Bible? You don't like that. What about a hymn that changes the Bible? And we keep singing it and keep singing it and keep singing it. We walk on what the world values. The world values gold. And we'll walk on it. And I saw no temple therein. Well, there was a temple in heaven when we went to the book of Revelation. It's gone. So there will be no building of God. There will be no house of God. Oh, man, what are we going to do? How are we going to meet Hebrews, you know, not forsaken assembly, and we meet as a church building? Well, what are we going to do? For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. We will have our services there before God and before the Lamb of God with no building at all. And if it's held in New Jerusalem, remember Nehemiah or Ezra, I think maybe both of them, remember they met in the streets of Jerusalem and had services and read in the book of the law, and they, they sang, and they praised God, and they cried. And people and Christians will say about street preaching, oh, that's not the biblical way. It looks like street preaching happens in New Jerusalem. It's all on the street. It's all outside. It's not indoors. Street preaching is God's way of doing it, because there's no building. It's gone. And the city had no need of the sun. There's no sun no more. Neither of the moon. The moon's bye-bye. To shine in it. For the glory of God did light in it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Jesus said, I am the light. And God in his light and Jesus Christ in his light will light the entire world. And guess what? There's no darkness in God. That new heaven is all light. No darkness at all. Wherever you're going to go, wherever you can do will be all light. No darkness. With the city of, of New Jerusalem being the brightest that it ever can be. Because there's God in, in, the, in Jesus Christ, the Lamb, lighting it all up. I always say like this, and I don't think I'm wrong about this, but if you could get yourself a metal box and seal that box and caulk that box and wrap that box and put yourself in that box and seal that box and close that box so it's airtight, you'll live, you won't die. Being sealed in that box, when they close that lid on you, you will not ever be in dark. You will still have the light of God. You can never have a shadow. And you can never have darkness in New Jerusalem or anywhere else because darkness is gone. Darkness has been cast into the lake of fire. We're forever always going to have light. If we step in our mansions and close the doors and close the windows, we will be still lighted by God's light. And it won't give, give us sunburn, it won't give us tan, and it won't give us skin cancer. And the nations, oh, now watch this. And the nations of them which are saved. Now these are not the nations that are the church age because you are a Christian. You are the bride of Christ. These nations that would come out of the tribulation period or come out of the Old Testament, they're not Jewish. They're nations. What one nation would you find out of the Bible that got right with God that will be found written a name in the Lamb's Book of Life that will go off in eternity? What about the Ninevites that, that uh, Jonah preached to? Did they repent? Didn't they get right? And didn't God repent of the evil he's going to do for them? 
Are they going to get the earth? They can't. That's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Where did they go? New heaven. Naaman, the one that had the, the leprosy, he did what God told him to do. He got right. He said, listen, even though i got to bow down in my master's house with God, I want to do it for, to God. Does he get New Jerusalem? No, he's not a Christian. Never would have been. He gets the heavens. The heavens are given to the, to the nations. Only one piece of ground has ever been given and promised to a group of people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in the eternity, there's the church, which is Jew and Gentile. The heavens, there's the Gentiles. The Jew, there's the new earth. And the nations that are saved shall walk in the light of it. And don't walk in the light on this planet, earth. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor unto it. Queen Elizabeth of England was a saved woman, loved of God. And she said if Jesus would ever come in during her time, she would step down off her throne, take off her tiara, and give it to him. I haven't heard any president ever say that. That woman was waiting and wanting Jesus to come. She would be one of the kings or queens of the nations. There are rulers and authorities that got saved. That done right. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. Alright? Alright? So those pearls are not going to be closed. Watch this. For there shall be no night there. No darkness. So as a person, I got to say, well, God, why did you make the pearl doors if you're not ever going to use them? You know what the answer is? That's just a garnish. You mean that Babylonian whore wore that necklace to identify herself and you, you take those same kind of pearls that were wrapped around women's necks and you say, watch this, I'm going to make it a door. And you know what? I'll make it a door that I'll never open or close every day a month in life. A woman that has a pearl necklace that doesn't just stick it in a closet. When she has the opportunity and it's right, she would wear them. They have value. I saw it for one time for a, a pearl necklace. And just, wow, it's just too expensive. The real one. I didn't want to get artificial. But God says that what you would wrap around your neck, I'm going to make a door, and I'm not even going to close or open that door. I forget, it's Japan or China. There are people there that go diving and may die to get these pearls from oysters and God says let's let there be 12 pearls and put them at the gates and there shall and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it the nations are coming into our city the bride of Christ they will come in and worship with us God and Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that interesting? And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that is, anything that defiles. There is no defiling in this city. That which is defiled is gone and will never come back. How's that? Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Again, we're getting this warning. There will be no abomination in this city. And it will not come in by the Gentiles. And maketh a lie. No liars in glory. There it is. You know... Many will say, oh, adultery, adultery, fornication. He doesn't mention that here. 
he mentions the sins of defilement, abomination, and liars. Those will not be in glory. Now be careful what you do with your tongue. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go in like a fire, but God says one of the things in New Jerusalem, there will be no liars. Wood, hay, or stubble. Yeah. <laughs> but they which are written in the land's book of life, no one that is lost will be there. No one. We will be there, all of us, for one purpose. Because of God and the Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, what a day that will be. What a glorious day. And when we can step before God and no problems at all. No sin. No darkness. No fear. No lies. And look around and say, wow. Boy, God, you did a great job. 